One, in which Robert Frost helps us move flat. Whose books these are, I think I know. <laughs> you can't take all of them with you though. I don't mind you asking me here to say what stays and what should go. Your little shells will think it queer, so many books on red but dear. <laughs> this sentimental book on blade leaf through months and nine years. These bone but this bit, this one's inscribed, he was much better at it. Um, this one's inscribed the thoughts it makes come rushing back in its fatal wake. The friends you miss, the ones you sweep under the carpet for sanity's sake. These books are lovely, dark and deep. And you'll have to choose which ones to keep. And piles to go before you sleep. Piles to go before you sleep. Two, in which Emily Dickinson helps us move flat. That's what I love. I swayed from door to door with worn out, cranky gloom. The bags under my eyes I felt as luggage filled the rooms. I knew not but the next might be my final trip that gave me that precarious gait, some call fed up with it. <laughs> Three, in which Elizabeth Bishop gives some sage advice. <laughs> The art of moving isn't hard to master. So many boxes filled with the intent to be moved that the move is no disaster. Move something every day. Accept the fluster of new door keys, the deposit badly spent. The art of moving isn't hard to master. Then practice moving farther, moving faster, your friends from out of town who you always meant to visit. They too have moved again. No disaster. We moved the old sofa and look, the TV from the last or next to last of three loved apartments went. The art of moving isn't hard to master. I moved two cities lovely ones, and vaster some realms I owned, two rivers, a continent. I will miss them, but it wasn't a disaster. <clears throat> Even moving you, the blue tack on the wall, the gesture of giving away the dictionaries, I shan't have lied. It's evident the art of moving's not too hard to master, though the flat may look like, say it, like disaster. <laughs> Four, in which W.H. Auden promises to help us move flat, but sits on the sofa and finishes our whiskey. <laughs> Poetry makes nothing happen. <laughs> in which Ted and Sylvia send their apologies. There is no panther lumbering up our stair, it does not dare, it does not dare, nor stacks of beehives fuming under chairs, nor foxes, ferrets, portented ravens, rooks, or glinted crows. We shake our fists and cry out, less of those. The ivy has not yet pushed the windows in. We have not spilt blood from cereal bowls, nor trapped fruit bats and other things in gilded cages. And yet, and yet, my love, before we congratulate ourselves too soon on a job well done and forget, sometimes I wonder that we have so papered our walls with other people's pages. Come live with me and be my mate, and all the fittings and fixtures of the flat will bust with joy. The flower of autumn and this tall boy. I'll leave a water ring around your heart in the mildewed kitchenette of afternoon TV. My cup of coffee overfloweth. Neighbors, iron side. Whatever happened to Baby Jane? That well-known scene in which, as you explain, the feral hue of Betty Davis meets Miss Crawford's head head on. For real. For real. <laughs>